Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. Morokuru Beach Lodge was opened in 2018 and by 2020 it had already won its first award. Condé Nast Traveller under their Reader's Choice Awards awarded it the accolade for top resort in Africa not only for 2020 but 2021 as well. And World Travel Awards awarded it the top accolade of South Africa's leading beach hotel. It's remotely located in a secluded nature reserve that's secure, it's gated, uh, there's security at the entrance of the nature reserve, it's serene, it's spectacular. The environment, the vegetation, you have lay wetlands, you have beaches, you have sand dunes, and the interiors are stylish and understated. It's an absolute paradise for your bird watchers, your nature lovers, people who like being active out and about. There's a lot for you to see, to do and enjoy. But what truly sets Morukuru apart is the service. It's consistent and highly delivered. This video is part of my Tembea Africa series where I showcase some of the best luxury resorts on the African continent. But when I'm not traveling, I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on quality under the radar brands, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, then my content is geared towards you. Morokuru is located at the tail end of the Western Cape. It's about three hours drive from Cape Town. And I would highly recommend if you're driving to Morokuru to use a 4x4. And that's because a good chunk of the roads are gravel. The day we arrived, it had rained in the morning. So the roads were a little bit slippery. Um, 4x4 ensures you've got additional traction, of course, the comfort Hiring cars in South Africa is incredibly easy and competitively priced. We used Europe cars, cannot recommend them highly enough. Incredibly easy, painless process, uh, filling out all the paperwork, sorting out everything at the beginning, and even the drop-off was fantastic. Only hiccup, got a couple of speeding tickets. South Africa has amazing roads. They're incredibly wide, very good quality roads. And in the United Kingdom, speeding limit is incredibly low. The temptation to step on the accelerator was just too great. But what I would say from experience, keep your speed under 200 kilometers per hour. The other way to arrive at Morukuru is to fly in privately. They have an informal um, airstrip, has grass on it, a lot of animals roaming around needs to be coordinated with Morukuru. Um, someone has to meet you. They arrive 20 minutes prior to your arrival, literally with pots and pans to scare away the animals. You'll typically find Cape Mountain zebras, Bontebok, ostrich, for example. They're there to give you an incredibly warm welcome, but they need to be moved for your safe landing. As you can imagine, everything at Morukuru and places of the same level, everything is meticulously organized. Whether you are met at the airstrip or you drive in and then they buzz you through at the gate, by the time you arrive at the entrance of the beach lodge, uh, a good number of the staff will be assembled out front to give you an incredibly warm welcome to Morukuru with cocktails. They'll whisk away your luggage and then you get a mini tour of the property en route to your room. You come into the property through the foyer. The foyer is where you meet for all the group activities. They have a number of activities that they provide at Morukuru. And whatever activities they provide, they also provide the equipment. And the activities are very much dependent on the weather, the time of year, and of course the group likes and dislikes. But they offer, for example, snorkeling, their sandboarding, which our group as a whole did for the first time. The ladies, as you can imagine, conservative, we sat on the board, and the men, head first, gung-ho, incredibly competitive, but it was a lot of fun, and I would highly recommend. 
Um, I'm still finding particles of very fine sand in my binoculars. I don't even know how I'm ever going to clean them. But every time I look, I reminisce and think of the good time at Morokuru. They also offer, for example, marine walks. They are amazing because you get to see um, a lot of different um, marine life that you otherwise would see in textbooks and never really see in real life. For example, um, we saw sea urchins, uh, a couple of different types of starfish. There was an abalone shell with brown mussels, with uh, cape sea urchins on it, with brown mussels, for example. There was a sea um, anemone as well that we saw. It was a lot of fun. And there were a couple of young children in our group, and it was a nice way for them to see the animals uh, in real life. They'd read about them, been taught about them at school, and then just to see them um, and help complete the picture. They also offer hiking, there's biking, there is your Feinbos guided tours, there's whale watching depending on the time of year, um, a lot of bird watching as well. It's a fantastic place to just sit, relax, enjoy things, do things, but also just enjoy the environment, the peace, the quiet and um, you know, quality place for rest and relaxation. I would highly recommend Morukuru, particularly for couples first and foremost. But if you're going to take children, I'd say more uh, on the slightly older side, so six, seven, eight years old. Uh, it's a lot more fun. They understand things. They can enjoy the marine walks. They can participate. They're learning about the animals at school, for example. Younger children, I'd be a little more anxious. Babies, for example, because it's a small property with five ensuite rooms. Uh, it's small, it's intimate, and children, it might be a little bit tricky, but you have the option to hire the place um, either per room basis, which are all en suite, or exclusive use um, of the entire property, depending on, of course, your needs, what you'd like, and um, your budget. There are five rooms, as I mentioned. Four are ocean-facing, two are one-bedroom suites, and then the other two are family suites. And then the fifth is a honeymoon suite, which is not ocean facing, but instead it has um, an outdoor hot tub. Ground floor where we came in, foyer, uh, as we were guided towards our rooms, in the middle of the property is the communal eating areas. There's a dining room and then there's also um, an alfresco dining space. And then on, on either side of that is where the rooms, the suites are located. Uh, you can sit down and eat wherever you'd like. When you arrive in the morning, afternoon, evening, you take a seat wherever you'd like to, to eat and then staff will come and serve you from there. On the way to our room, room five there, there was a pantry, bar area. You can help yourself to drinks as and when you'd like or if there's staff around, request whatever you'd like and it's delivered either in the communal spaces or in your room. We went during one of the high alert times and everybody, uh, every room was given a wine crate and in there were your cups, plates and um, the various uh, eating appliances that you needed and you were able to take them from there and drop things off in there so there wasn't any cross-contamination with any of the other rooms. Above the eating space, uh, on the first floor, there is an, another communal space, more your entertainment space, there's a pool table, there's a bar, and seating space for you to relax and enjoy. And then uh, outside there is a roof terrace giving you spectacular 360 degree views of the area. It's also a great space, exclusive use, or even during parties, Christmas I can imagine, firework displays uh, for brides, for example. Back down to the ground floor, as we're guided towards our room, um, there are five suites as I mentioned. We stayed in room number five. You come into the room, it has a long entrance uh, walkway. To the left, there is hanging space for your clothes, also space for you to leave suitcases. And then as you walk through in front of you, there is a, a wood burning fireplace. They light the fire, uh, same time as they do the turn down. Every day they ask, would you like the fire lit? And then they light it for you. By the time you come back from dinner, the room is deliciously warm and you have the roaring fire, seating space for you to sit down, enjoy the fire, relax, uh, possibly have a nightcap. 
And then next to that area is the piece de resistance of the room. It's a built-in day bed with a big, massive window um, looking out uh, to the sea and the environment all around the vegetation. Absolutely spectacular. It's the best thing they could have done for that room. It's a great space just to sit down and watch the sea, whale watch, to read, to chat, to snooze. It was a an absolutely fantastic little spot. Rest of the room is very much uh, a minimalist room, clean lines, there's the bare wooden floors, crisp white linen, big, uh, big king size bed, and there was a TV at the end, remote control, press the button, TV comes up, uh, press the button, it goes down. Never watched the TV, but I, I thought I'd mention it because I'm sure a couple of people would say, did, was there a TV in the room? Behind the bed was a walk-in bathroom come dressing room, separate water closet, big walk-in shower space, and then there's also the big bathtub uh, for you to enjoy. Other side of the bed, there was the balcony with seating space, great for coffee in the morning and particularly well watching. It was a great spot. The decor, simple, minimal, low fuss. The artwork very much played off the vegetation, um, Feinboss, um, picture, uh, Feinboss um, plants, your proteus, for example, adorned the walls. They kept it minimal, simple, and the, uh, the, the nature outside and the deco inside very much complemented each other. Morukuru is a superb um, beachfront hotel that does justice to South African tourism. It raises, it, it flies the flag incredibly highly for South Africa. It's a place I would put not only on a Cape Town or South African list of top places to visit, but Africa as a whole. The service, I, I wouldn't want to actually call out one person, but the team all work incredibly well together. There's a host couple, uh, the husband and wife team and the wife was actually on maternity leave or when we arrived she had just left for her maternity leave. Uh, two general managers, two very different personalities. One is playful, he's fun, he's someone you could go to a party with and have an absolute scream but still incredibly professional. The other a little more serious but still engaging and warm and whenever you see him he's always asking how you are and you have uh, a brief conversation before you continue with whatever you're doing. Home-cooked meals, uh, uh, chefs on site, so it was home-cooked meals that are a little more elevated. Uh, the attention to detail, the quality, the way they've been executed, the flavors, the textures, the, the way they all came together. It was amazing. The staff work well together, the chemistry, they're friendly, they're attentive, they remember what you like. Every time they see you, they'll either bring you your favorite drink or snack and just make Morukuru that bit more special. It's a superb place that I highly recommend. On a bucket list, it represents South Africa, as I said, very well. Any other questions, as always, let me know in the comments down below, but do subscribe so you don't miss out as we continue to Timbea Africa.